the mayor of narcissism gets sued. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. In an earlier video, I introduced you to Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard, who is demonstrating all the behaviours of a narcissist. She has found herself on the receiving end of legal action. Illinois Leaks, which is something to do with Edgar County Watchdogs, Inc., tells us Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard sued by trustees, Clark, alleging forgery, withholding financial records. John Kraft and Kirk Allen write, Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard has been sued by Dalton Village trustees Jason House, Brittany Norwood, Kiana Bletcher, and Tammy Brown, and the village clerk Alison Key, alleging, among other things, that Mayor Henyard forged cheques by using the clerk's stamp on village cheques without authority, and for failing to, or refusing to, provide access to village financial records including credit card statements, and for removing the clerk's access to the bank account information without approval. The complaint was filed on December the 22nd last year. A memorandum of law supporting a motion and the motion for a temporary restraining order and a preliminary injunction was filed on January the 3rd this year. Naturally, the filing of a legal complaint against Tiffany Henyard is a threat to control. The fact that it has been suggested and alleged that she has committed some form of wrongdoing when she believes that she's entirely correct and proper in what she does is a threat to control. The suggestion that she should be accountable, whether in a civil capacity or a criminal capacity, is also a threat to control. The complaint alleges that she issued checks using the signature stamp of the village clerk without authorization. Deceit, sense of entitlement, absence of accountability. That she had not presented checks for signature for October and November 2023, leaving approved bills unpaid, lack of accountability, or simply issuing checks without the clerk's signature, sense of entitlement. That she has refused to issue payments for invoices approved by the village board. She clearly views the village board as the enemy, and therefore, even though they're doing something which is sensible, approving invoices which need to be paid, presumably for services provided to the town, she refuses to do so because that activity is linked to a group of individuals that have been painted black in her world. Thus, Dalton suffers because it's not paying the invoices which have been rendered towards it, and this is done by a mayor who's supposedly there to act in Dalton's interests. Naturally, people will be starting to realise that Tiffany Henyard only acts in her interests. Furthermore, she's accused of causing the clerk's name to be removed from bank account access and caused other names to be added without the approval of the clerk or the board. Deceitful activity, lack of accountability. She's further been accused of restricting access of the trustees to certain financial information of the village, which, of course, by keeping them out of the picture is a means of heading off potential threats of control. And she's failed to provide monthly financial reports and credit card statements to the trustees, once again demonstrating a lack of accountability. Thus, this legal complaint evidences some further aspects of her narcissism in action, and it itself amounts to a threat to her control. Now, what might the good people of Dalton be thinking about all of this? Well, do you think it is the case that Tiffany Henyard, when she was standing for office, said, hey, y'all, 
I'm standing to be mayor. When I get in, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to misappropriate funds to pay for my hair and makeup. I'm going to spend shitloads on security to make me look really important. I'm going to increase the amount of money that I'm paid. I'm going to ensure that whoever might come after me can only be paid $25,000. I'm going to behave like this is my own personal fiefdom. I'm going to issue checks willy-nilly and forge the signature stamp of the village clerk. I'm not going to pay certain invoices because I'll choose not to do so. I'm going to remove the clerk's name from the bank account. And I'm going to add other people without the approval of the clerk or the board of trustees. I'm not going to be financially accountable. I'm going to do as I please. Vote for me. Naturally, she didn't say any of that. Because the relationship that she has with the people that voted for her is pretty similar to the way that the relationship will have panned out if this was a romantic entanglement. When you first meet the narcissist that you fall in love with and become entangled with, although there are some instances where some narcissists issue some foreshadowing of their behaviour, for instance, they may talk about, you should stay away from me, I just end up hurting people. Those are just little glimmers of the future. And I've explained in separate videos why that's done. But the narcissist does not sit down with you and say, look, I'm going to give you a really good time for about six months to a year. And then after that, I'm going to be fed up of you. So I'm going to punish you because I'm going to see that it's your fault. And after that, I'm going to steal your money. I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to be horrible to your children. I'm going to insist that you stay at home and not work so I can keep an eye on you. I'm going to call you names. I'm going to accuse you of having affairs. I'm going to damage some of your property. I'm going to stop you seeing your friends and family. I'm going to break you. I'm going to make you really sad and unhappy. Here and there, I'll sprinkle some of the good stuff back on you again. But I'm really going to take you and smithereen your self-esteem. I'm going to cause you to wonder what on earth you've done wrong. I'm actually going to cause you to almost lose your mind. And then I'm going to kick you out of the house and end the relationship. I'm going to stop you seeing your children. I'm going to go around and tell everybody that you're an alcoholic and a drug addict and a whore. So uh, how about being in a relationship with me? Of course, just like Tiffany Henyard didn't tell any of the voters the way that she was going to behave, the narcissist in a romantic setting does not tell you about all the things that they are going to do. Why? Because the vast majority of narcissists aren't planning that that's what they're going to do. At the outset, you're seen as wonderful. The narcissist has no idea, even though he, may, he or she will have done it time and time again previously, that they'll have engaged in those very behaviours in the relationship before you, and the one before that, and the one before that, and so on and so forth. But in that moment of seduction, it's all about the good stuff. And it has to be all about the good stuff to draw you in. In the same way, Tiffany Henyard, and although I haven't seen what she's stated when she want, was running for election, I can tell you now, it won't be any of the things that she's now doing. She'll have made various grand promises, probably came across quite convincingly as somebody that cared about Dalton and that she wanted to do the best for it. And thus, just like a romantic victim, of a narcissist, the residents of Dalton have been suckered in, uh, been suckered and sucked in to this relationship with Tiffany Henyard. And then, having got the power, having been elected mayor, she then abuses those voters, those residents, by behaving as she pleases, similar to the way that a narcissist in a romantic entanglement, once devaluation occurs, abuses that intimate partner. None of the voters would have been able to predict what was coming. There may have been some evidence that demonstrates that she is a narcissist, perhaps grandiose behaviour beforehand, sweeping promises. 
If you looked hard enough, the information will have been there. But remember, those voting are unlikely to immediately think, oh, I'm dealing with a narcissist here. And it might be that she operated with some form of facade at the outset. Although her her behaviour thereafter does tend to suggest that it's more likely that she just kept the beast hidden rather than actively operated a facade. But one will be able to determine more by scrutinising her pre-election conduct. The fact is, those voters didn't know what they were getting, and even though there might have been some clues and hints in her behaviour before voting commenced, she will have not have stood out in the way that she does now. And it's exactly the way that the narcissist behaves in a romantic relationship. Makes you think that you're getting something wonderful, and then once they're in, and a period of time has passed, so that the golden period ends, then devaluation occurs. For Tiffany Henyard, her devaluing behaviour of the people that voted her in, and the devaluing behaviour of the trustees, has occurred pretty promptly as a consequence of her getting her hands on power. As Lord Acton once said, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Nevertheless, it's not really so much to do with that, but rather the behaviour of a narcissist who, having obtained that power, having obtained the power which allows the pursuit of the prime aims, the narcissism basically says, we don't need to keep the beast in check any longer. She can behave as she likes now because she has the keys to the kingdom. As always, there are repercussions, and here it's legal action. It remains to be seen where it leads to. But it again provides you with a useful opportunity of seeing how the dynamic of the narcissist here in a political sense mirrors that of the seduction of an intimate partner and then the devaluation thereafter. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.